Hello, this is Michael. I'm going to go over an installation and sign up of uh, LogMeOne's uh, Team and Business Edition in this video. So in order to install it, please go to LogMeOne's.com and then uh, what you will do is mouse over on the, you know, mouse over the sign up. It is free. You get the option for Team and Business Enterprise Edition. Click on that. When you get to this screen, it, uh, you need to sign up, you know, complete a form, and then select Team and Business Edition. You also have an option to select Enterprise Edition. But in this example, we're gonna uh, go over Team and, uh, business, you know, Team and Business Edition. Okay, let's complete the form. The first name is Joe, and the last name is Wright. Company name is uh, Firms Tech. Title is CTO. Work email is Joe W at firmstech.com. It is 703551212. And uh, for the domain, I'm going to add Firmstech team. And, and then it will automatically pick this to be my. Uh, uh, logging URL for my company. You know, 100 people. The country is United States. This is checked. And now I click on sign up. As soon as clicking on sign up, it brings us to this page. When you click on it, it takes you to the help screen, and that's the help screen. And the support knowledge article that gives you know information both on Teams and Enterprise Edition. You can look and under getting started, and more importantly, you know in the beginning it gives you some detail and overview about the product. But when you look at LogMeOne's deployment implementation, you have some idea you know what you need to do. Okay, so let's go back to you know the registration page. What LogMeOne's does sends a confirmation email. To the email address, so you need to go and select that, uh, you know, click on that email to be able to uh, follow the rest of the process. And uh, you know, I received an email uh, from LogMe once and provides the username and also logging page, and I can click to actually activate the account. And when I click on activate your account, it brings me to the activation page that I need to select a password. So I select my password and I repeat it again. It will ask me to set up my security question. You can set whatever security question that you have. You can type your security question and then you can save changes. And now it will take you to the software. Uh, log me once uh, you're logging as, a, as an administrator. You have two separate dashboard. You got a user dashboard and also you got an administrator, uh, you know, dashboard. And uh, it shows this icon on the top, a few icons on the top. And this one is the admin icon. It is instructing you to click on admin icon. We click on it. Now it gives you an idea about the overview of the other features of the software. Click on next. And this is a smart menu. Click on the smart menu. And it gives the list of other, some of the functionality. And then click on next. And now we are within the software. So the first thing it is asking us to do as part of this checklist, it is asking us to create a new user. So let's, uh, you know, create a new user, our first user. It says this is where, you know, we manage our users. I click on, I can either click on, you know, add user right here and basically add Tommy. Being my user, I also include Tommy's email address. And I can activate and send an email. I can check this box. It automatically activates the user and also send the welcome email to the user. So let's click on that. The very first time it's going to ask for my uh, password confirmation. And then it is complete. So next, 
in, as part of checklist, it is asking me to put my first app. So let's put the first app. My first app, it says click on add app. And as first app, let's, I'm going to select LinkedIn. So I select LinkedIn, it is automatically autofills the logging URL for LinkedIn. So let's put my login URL, my username for LinkedIn. And then I'm going to put my password for LinkedIn. And if I want to add any specific notes for LinkedIn, such as the, uh, my uh, LinkedIn security answer is XYZ, maybe. That's what I want to do. Click on Add App. So now LinkedIn is been added, and as you see in our progress bar uh, of the checklist, we have com uh, you know completed this task as well. And now we can try auto login. Click on auto login. It shows you you know where you can log in. Uh, you know, click on here to log into the app. And as soon as you click on it, it will automatically log in to the app, and we are done. Now, if we go to Password Manager, it's going to ask us, did we sign up to LinkedIn? If the answer is yes, successfully, the check mark is completed, and our first task was done. And this was how to add a really app, you know, uh, to the LinkedIn account uh, to log me on. So there are multiple ways you can add app, and one of them was clearly by using, you know, this add app icon and pulling it from the catalog. Another way you can do it is using add app by going to the plus sign on the top. This uh, plus sign on the top, the icon is available in all pages that you go. You can use it to add app, add users, add groups. You have this option to do you know, multiple uh, ways of adding uh, you know, applications. So, so that was one of the ways uh, you know we were able to add app so what we can do is there are other ways we can add apps as well L let's say let's uh, try this website this URL now this URL is a unique URL it has got uh, uh, three fields you want to add this app and it has got three separate fields so if you have any application that has got uh, more fields uh, and you want to add them, you can add them also manually. There's a, uh, you know, if you go to extension icon, that's another way you can add app. Click on uh, the, the menu, you can add app manually, and then it will come up with a pop-up and ask you, you know, select the username. So this is the username, so that's the first thing we do. We select the username. You know, you can even, you know, uh, put uh, your email here. Now you Put your email here, and uh, in fact, then it says, you know, we set, we select the email, click on next, then it says put your password. I can select password and put uh, my password. Now I s entered my password. It says, do you have any other fields? I say, yes, I do have other fields, like I want to add the company name. I want to say firm's tech and it added company name as well so if I click on next next question is where do you want this to be saved I can select it to be saved in a business or any other group that I want and then when I click on remember now this application is actually added if I click on refresh I should be seeing you know this application is also added uh, uh, to your LogMeOne's password manager. So that's another way you, know, you can add app to LogMeOne's. So let's go ahead and add other apps. So like, you know, let's do, you know, f mm, Twitter. You can add, pick Twitter and just, you know, type your you know, username for Twitter and also the password. And as you type the password, you'll see if it detects the password has been leaked in dark web. It actually tells you how many times it has been leaked and it is telling you not to select the password. I'm gonna let it go like this because later on in the, pro, uh, in the 
this video I'm going to show you you know uh, the issues you will see and I want you to see how I get a flavor of um, you know a real life flavor of what users generally do and you would be able to see the passwords that are weak as well so let's add that as also click on OK okay now let's try to add another app this time I'm gonna add uh, you know Facebook so I'm gonna put my email address let's say I'm gonna put my password as well put it as soon as I click on login you know it's gonna ask me do you want me to remember you know the password so this is another way you can you know save password the idea is when you go to different websites and you enter your user ID password for the very first time it will ask you you know to set up the password also so you can click on remember and this password also is saved now into log me once if you refresh it uh, you will see the password has been saved all right now let's go through uh, you know importing the password I click on file open and I will pick download now document and this is my password I click on open now all the passwords are imported I can see you know what the passwords are and I can see you know uh, how the passwords are actually set up I can if this is the naming is not correct I can really change it put it into the right name so now that this is all done I can say these apps are automatically assigned to a group in this case I'm not going to do it uh, but when you assign it to a group it will uh, in fact let me do it I'll automatically assign all these apps that I'm importing to sales group so let's say import and it shows the apps are imported so I have five passwords basically successfully imported so when I go to the list I see all my all of my passwords that are imported uh, to log me once and uh, if I look at these apps for example on an individual app because I said to be you know imported I said it has to be in a group I go to group I already say see it's in the sales group so all these apps are in the sales group as it shows also here it's in sales group okay so this was multiple ways I showed you can you know import uh, you know passwords and add password also there are other ways you can import it there's a document you can review it on our knowledge base that shows different options to import password you can uh, manually add it you can do it through the plus sign or using remember password if for the very first time um, you know we go to sign up uh, on basically enter your password on a website it will detect it and then ask you do you want us to remember it so that's another option so as I explained here I, my, you can have uh, uh, you know in the password manager section you can see the password in multiple views so this was uh, you know medium icon view you got you can go extra large view you can go to you know details view and you can see detailed view all this different apps that you have now uh, on the details view it shows you the strength of the password I have purposefully selected passwords that are uh, weak strong you know medium size so you'll see you know how the screen looks like and the idea is you want to make sure you uh, use uh, you know strong password now for every app that I select if I click on you know I or the for the panel right panel it shows me the details of the app on the right panel so in this case I have selected uh, you know Salesforce it shows my account and as well as you know the details on the Salesforce app now group shows membership of those app which you know which uh, member they are part of user shows which users are actually included or are using this app uh, so you will be able to see the data for them I can also sort the app I can you know sort it based on application name last used you know if I click on last use it will you know sort it based on that I mean I haven't really used the apps here so that's why you wouldn't you know see anything changed here 
So I can sort it based on the app, IP address, creation date, apps that are shared, category. So I can do it multiple shares here. I can also search, uh, you know, search the app, SIG app based on a filter. And let me remove this I. So I can search if I know, for example, and you know the this the username of an app, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. I can search, you know, for the app name. For example, uh, you know, let me try password. I can do the search if I know the password for the app, but I don't know which app has it. And if I type password, I see, you know, these are the app that the word password, you know, is included and it shows the strength of it. So this means it has got little more character than, uh, you know, this app for Gmail. I can do the same thing for logging URL or I can, you know, search for, let's say, Facebook that will automatically show me all the apps that are there. Okay, so that was the, you know, filter, the way you can filter it. Uh, what I would recommend highly is, uh, you know, follow the same process you saw in the checklist, add all of your apps, they're all imported. Then the next thing you do is you go to user management. So I'm going to cover exactly the same thing that you know uh, the checklist does. So you go to a smart menu and then user management. So as we mentioned, the smart menu. Going through it one more time. When you click on the smart menu, it is uh, you know uh, in four different sections, and each section has a set of functionality. Password management section talks about password management and catalog. Security is related about users, groups you know, authentication setting and po uh, password policy. And general is about general setting and reports is for reporting, reporting purposes. So I'm right now in the user management. I can, you know, add the users any way I want. And what you see on the right side is the detailed information I can put or the user profile about this user. I can add user, you know, information. Now under group, I can add, you know, which group this user belongs to. For example, I already know sales group. I added, you know, a few apps to be part of it. If I make this user part of sales group, what that means is all the apps that are assigned in sales group is now uh, assigned to this user. So if I go to application, I'll see all those apps that are assigned to the user group. And if I mouse over, it basically says these apps are inherited, inherited from the group membership. So it is because they were part of that group, that's why you see those apps. Now it is part, I mean, that is definitely one way to do it, but you can also add exceptions. For example, I want to add app Facebook, which as you see, it's not here, as an exception to this specific user. I click on it, now Facebook is also added. Uh, you know, as an exception to this app. Now, in fact, let me do this. I'm going to remove this and add LinkedIn, and I'll explain the reason in a second. So, I've added LinkedIn, you know, uh, to this user. This user has no privileges for LinkedIn. They can only, they cannot read it, they cannot update. I mean, it's only really using the app and nothing else. They cannot read any information on the app. They cannot delete the, you know, LinkedIn app. Uh, so, so you can set up all this as part of the setting for this application. Now, let me go back to the Tommy's app. Now, Tommy was not part of any group, right? So but what I can do is I can add this app selected and select another app and you know assign it to Tommy. So now Tommy has you know access to these two apps. Now at any time uh, when you come here uh, on the status field it shows what's the status of this user. It says this is the owner and the green indicates it is active. Now this is a gray out and it is pending. That means this user has been an account has been created for this user, but this user has not taken any action to activate his account to become active. And I will 
go over to the demo and presentation, show you or this tutorial, show you what you can do next to activate the user. So I will show the user side of the activity as well. Next, uh, if I want to disable this user or perform any activities, I can either click on this three dot menu or you know select anywhere on the screen on this row and right mouse button it shows a couple of options I can do for this user. I can activate this user, I can deactivate this user, uh, I can you know reset uh, user so the uh, user membership, group membership, everything changes. I can reset the factor so all the 2FA or multi-factor authentication for the user you know, resets and I can reset account which means all the data for account is gone but uh, the user is still you know in the system but their data you know is cleared so these are other ways uh, you know uh, we can handle and manage users now le let's go into uh, smart menu we talked about user management this time we're going to talk about group management under group management it shows all the groups that we have for example I have a one user uh, in the cells uh, group and I have uh, you know five application on the sales group but under marketing there's only one application now let's add a group I can add it from here or I can go to plus sign and say add a group I'm gonna call I can call it social marketing shared. Maybe that's what I want to call it, my group name. So it will show it as social marketing. So that is the social marketing group. And let's say what I want to do is uh, for the people in this group, I'm going to assign, you know, Facebook and I'm going to assign LinkedIn. So whoever I add to this group, they will get, you know, this membership uh, to these apps. Now, what I can do is come back here and add other users and assign other users to be part of this group. I'm going to go, you know, plus sign, add a user. I'm going to call this user Sunday. And then... I add this user now this user is added also to the system if I refresh it I should see all my three users now what I will do is the social media it says there are two users added and to add, add added and then I'm gonna make Sunday to be part of this group so Sunday automatically has been assigned to have these two apps now let me go back to user management just that uh, you know you can see smart menu user management and if I go to click on Sunday go to application I see these two apps added and they're inherited from the user as you see it has got very extensive uh, you know group membership and application role set up and the permission provided for each of these apps and what uh, the apps can actually do okay so uh, the next thing we're gonna do before we continue let's go to smart menu let's add our branding so under general you see you know branding I click on branding the first thing I do is the company name uh, uh, firms tech team and I click on the icon and let's add the logo the firms the logo and now this is branded as you see here and I can you know even brand the color so I'm not going to touch it for now just click on save changes and now log me once is branded uh, with the logo so let's go now I think it's a good time to start and uh, log in as one of the users and see what uh, would they see if you remember uh, when I went to user manager we already sent the link to Tommy. Let's log in as Tommy and see what is Tommy's status. Okay, uh, since I have, uh, you know, sent an email and activated a welcome email to Tommy, Tommy has received this email from 
my account. It basically tells Tommy that it sends a welcome to log me once uh, account activation and it tells Tommy that your email is activated. Uh, you need to activate the email and that's the login URL. So if I click on this account, it will take me to log. Okay, I clicked on the link and now I am at log me once. As you see here, it is already branded with my company logo. And at this time, I can put my password. I'm in a different browser just to separate the activities of what each user will see. I'm going to select, you know, different uh, security question. And I'll save changes. And as usual, as soon as I log in, it gives me an overview, you know, to Tommy. So Tommy understands a little tutorial of how the software works, what are the features of it, and click on next. As you see, this is a little bit different tutorial than the, what Joey received. It is because uh, Tommy is a user, not an administrator. So got it. Thank you. And it shows they're getting it started and since everything was done and uh, you know Tommy didn't have to do anything now as you see as soon as I log in Tommy has got these two separate apps so if I go back and if you look at Tommy uh, group um, uh, the applications Tommy has it is these two apps uh, so Tommy has only access to these two apps. So what I'm going to do is give access to Tommy to LinkedIn as well. So let's push LinkedIn here. And now I'm going to bring, uh, you know, Tommy's access. So I'm in a, a Chrome, bro uh, Firefox browser. If I refresh, I will see uh, Tommy has access to LinkedIn as well. Let's uh, click on, you know, right mouse button, edit, and see what Tommy sees. As you can see here, Tommy can only see the username, you know, and uh, you know, the login URL, nothing else. And also, you know, uh, set more options. They're all grayed out. So Tommy, as a user, what they can do, just click on it, uh, click on the app. It will launch it. It will autofill the password, and they use the app. And that's all Tommy can do, just use the app. Now, let's go a little bit more detail. Let's, I'm going to go back uh, to, you know, uh, Joey, which is the administrator. I want to give read access to, you know, this LinkedIn app. Now, this LinkedIn app has lead access. I'm going to come back and let's refresh it. Refresh it one more time as Tommy. And I go to LinkedIn and click on edit. Now I can see... Uh, you know other information I can see you know the notes everything but can I change it no I cannot change it I cannot do anything so it's only read only access let's go back one more time and now give update access so I got update access as you see instantly as soon as you add the uh, you know the permission you know it is applied to you know uh, Tommy as well, so it is uh, refreshed. I'm going to go back here, and as you see now, I have other option. I can copy username, password, and this time when I edit, now I should be able to edit it. I say, this is a note two from Tommy. So <clears throat> I can add, you know, more options, you know, more, uh, you know, data and field and ability to update it, but. To be clear, I cannot delete it, okay? So I'm going to save changes. And now this time, I'm going to go back again <coughs> and give delete privilege to Tommy, to the LinkedIn app. So let's go back here one more time, refresh. And now if I right mouse button, you see delete option here. So that is and delete option here as well. So that is how uh, you can use it to uh, really change and manage privilege for you know different applications. Now I did all of these for the user called Tommy, right? So this was all for Tommy. Now I can do exactly the same thing at the group level 
and basically give the same level of access if I go to group level and uh, you know say for example any members of marketing team let's see if they have any application you know, any members of marketing team will have read update or delete access so you don't have to do it at the individual user level you can do it at the group level and automatically people will you know get inherent all of those privileges okay let's set it up and click on and it sends the email to Joey I click uh, so what it does is it is sending uh, the code uh, to you know uh, Joey and the email is gone to uh, Joey Joey I'll come here and log in to Joey's email okay now let's look at the verification code that we receive this is the code we double click on it save it let's go back here and type the verification code and click on verify and this validates and this basically is validated and which means now if I click on save changes my OTP or two-factor authentication basically is set up for email message and I can finish it and continue this is the process the users will generally need to go through when they're setting up the very first time to 2FA if I log in again it will not ask me for that let's uh, let me log out one more time okay I'm going to put my verification okay I'm going to put my password and now it's going to send me an email now as I'm waiting on the email to to receive the email so I get my one-time password or uh, my verification code and uh, so it is important to note in case if I don't receive the email I can you know click on send email uh, send uh, email again and so I can receive the email so it is important that's why it's important to set up you know multiple uh, verification so in case uh, you know you don't have your mobile device with you you know then you can try or you know, another option if you don't have access to your email you can try another option so this gives you multiple ways of logging to your account okay now that I have received my verification code I'll come up here and click on add it and click on verify now I am logged into the application and now we go back to the smart menu look at other functionality now let's look at password policy what password policy is uh, you can have a master password policy to log into log me once as well as application password policy with the master password policy you can define you know when the password expires and you know how to enforce password policy and warn about leaked password as you saw uh, earlier you know if there is a leaked password you can warn the user and you can disable it or never you know do it and you can also set up a policy and that could be a password policy with the syntax that you could use for log me once so all of your users when they create their account they will adhere to this password policy so this is the password policy for log me once if you are using with password to the account application password policy are the password policy for your applications that you add to log me once now in order to uh, you know uh, you would be able to add leak password you could set up policies and also you could uh, you know set up how the users uh, uh, when an app is added how the application is to be configured whether it is already shared or not shared and that's done through this setting now you set up password policy and save it next uh, we talk about SAML SAML uh, are applications that are uh, based on a protocol called SAML and uh, you can do uh, you know single sign-on using SAML and you can create you know identity providers now the next application that the next feature will go over is uh, you know device manager as a administrator I can see you know my system how people are logging to the account from where they are coming from for example here I see 
uh, you know, from device management perspective, I have two users coming. They come through Windows 10, and that's their, you know, PC name. And I see the two users that have uh, joined. And uh, now if I click on the I, it gives me additional information about this user, the computer they are coming. And more importantly, if I have a mobile, I will get really collect more information uh, from the mobile devices. I will show that later on. I can add devices if that's of interest. You can add, you know, uh, each user can add their own uh, YubiKey device from here as well. Now this was, uh, you know, device management part. So let's talk about device map. Device map shows, uh, you know, the list of, uh, you know, activities and the, where the users are coming from. For example, I see, you know, I have a user, Tommy, that is coming from this location. Now let me show you this, uh, you know, I can remotely, for example, this user has forgotten his and to, when he left the office, has forgotten to, uh, uh, you know, log out of log me once. What you can do is, as an administrator, I can remotely log them out. So, for this purpose, I'm gonna really let me show you how this works a little bit. So let me bring it here, so you would be it would be visible for you. If I click on remote logout, it will you know, try to remotely log out, log the user from the application, and now if the user tries to refresh, they're automatically logged out of the application. So this is uh, really a way for remotely logging users uh, from the application as well, in case if they forgot uh, to log in, uh, to log out, sorry. Okay. Now, next, we'll talk about, you know, productivity. What productivity is, is that of reports and charts that are available for the uh, administrator to see how their users are doing uh, across the board. For example, I see which apps are used most frequently. For example, LinkedIn has been used, which IP addresses uh, that's been used, which browsers, sorry, which IP addresses that are constantly used which groups are used, you could see the activity, <clears throat> you could see what time of the day, you know, most often user, uh, you know, use your uh, your account, you can see which devices, you know, are used, you can see both devices here for both of the users, and I can filter it, I can filter it based, if I want to see a specific user, I can filter it and see, you know, what that specific user has done. Under security chart, I can have additional charts to get a sense of uh, report and productivity tools on how I can improve the security uh, within my organization. Let's go to a smart menu, and this time we go through activity. Now, activity is a list of activity and logs that happens within your account and your business, your organization. So here I can see uh, you know, everything, I have 28 events, and I see every time the user, you know, logs in what they did. For example, if you see Tommy had, uh, you know, set up uh, authentication, so I already know, you know, the user has set up the authentication, and it is, was done through email. Now, every time the user logs in, I can see, I can see a lot of events that the user is performing. So let's do this. I also have a filter. I can filter the user. I can say, show me, for example, all the activity Tommy did. I click on it. It only, you know, shows me Tommy's activity. Now, <clears throat> I can filter it based on events. I can say, show me events that related to site creation. This only shows that events that Salesforce was created. Uh, to different accounts of Salesforce. And uh, Netflix created GoDaddy, so I can see all their records. And then what I can do is, if I'm interested, I can export it to CSV. So it gives a lot of flexibility to look at, uh, you know, what each user have done and helps you to understand from that perspective how to improve, you know, user activity 
and assist them in case they have uh, you know any issues. Now, uh, let's go through scorecard. A scorecard is the add-on which is part of uh, uh, identity theft protection. As soon as you go to a scorecard, it shows for this user, Joey, what is the risk, uh, you know, of this user for you know ID their identity risk uh, when you are when they are traveling on the web. And for example, it is right now calculating for this user, and it looks at seven different factors. The factors are you know, leaked password, dark web, hybrid identity, uh, you know, overall password strength. So it looks at all these different, uh, you know, risk factor and it shows it here and then comes up with a number. So you want to be really in the A range and, uh, you know, uh, that would be, you know, the best. So in different areas, you're protecting yourself. So one area, uh, uh, let's, you know, zoom in into leaked uh, password monitoring. If I click on it, it tells me there are two passwords. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, duplicated, but there are two passwords that have been leaked. So you need to change them. If I go to dark web monitoring, and this is a new email that was created. So, you know, definitely there is nothing uh, about this in the dark web. But you can add other emails in the dark web and able to uh, see what are the issues and what uh, if those accounts have been compromised in past. Now, hybrid security score shows you automatically detects a set of you know risk-based uh, uh, you know uh, controls so to see what issues may be within your account. So it will try to alert you to fix them. For example, it tells you, you know, if there are duplicate passwords, if, you know, uh, you have not enabled recovery options, you need to enable it. So I'll, I'll show you all, your, all of those in a second. When you, when you go password the strength, it shows a list of all your passwords, and if there are any duplicates, what are the compromised list, and what password needs to be changed quickly. It gives you all those items. Now, logging password the strength, it shows that your master logging, the account that you use to log into login once, how is that protected? Application password policy it looks at multiple different factors. For example, it says, you know, how many of my passwords has at least, you know, 15 characters? How many have got uppercase? How many have got lowercase? How many have got special characters? Not many. So it's looking at all those items to see, you know, what is the good mix uh, for uh, your passwords and your security. Now, protected uh, login score is something very unique also about Log Me Once. Now, for example, if you want to log into, let's say, your LinkedIn account, if you remember your password to log in, you know, you can assume that means you already know, you know, it's easy. The password is easy to remember. It is not, you know, 20 character password so it's easy to remember and you type it yourself you don't need log me once to log you to the account and when you type something yourself without a log me once we con constitute that as unprotected login but if you log into your LinkedIn password which is very complex let's say it is 20 30 characters and you use the password manager we constitute that's a protected login so these are the different ways you can, uh, you know, see what's the mix, how you're really using your software to, uh, you know, your login and protect you. The idea is we are using really analytics to help to you to be more secure in your identity that you are visiting over the web. So if I go to a smart menu, this time in identity theft protection. Identity theft protection uh, is an add-on and this shows a risk of all of the users you have and uh, you know and what is the risk of their identity it looks at basically builds the risk for the whole company so your whole company based on the all the activities you have all the users all the number of passwords you have it's B so it is really giving a risk score for your company and how to improve yourself better
Now let's look at settings. Now settings, everything you see, I'm logged in as an administrator right now. I'm on an admin section. The admin, I have some options for global settings. For example, I can say, do do I want to enable, uh, you know, offline mode in case the internet is down? Any question you have on any of this option, you can click on I, and you know, read through the description of what it does. Similarly, disable the password manager for the browser. Disable the autofill for the browser. You can disable it. Mock shot is you can globally say whoever tried to do a hack attempt to your account or does the invalid or valid login, you can protect it. And you, maybe you want to capture their photo. You want to maybe your users are trying to log into a payroll application, and you also want to know who did it even for the valid logins, you can, you know, uh, capture that info. Uh, under privacy, you can decide whether you want to do any, you know, capture any camera data or any location data. And key management is another way of securing and creating enhanced security for the application using, you know, hardware security module for the app. Okay, this uh, really completes the training area and the demo of the software from admin perspective. Keep in mind uh, what I had mentioned earlier, you know, the admin has got this, you know, icon here. This is uh, toggles the admin, switches the admin between, uh, you know, the user console mode or the admin console mode. I'm right now in the admin. So if I click on this, I will go to the user mode. And as you see, this shows only apps that I have access to, uh, you know, as a user. It doesn't show, uh, you know, all the apps that are in the company. It only shows my apps. And it's also branded. So let me go back for a second. When I go to the password manager here, I see lo a lot more apps. You can consider the password manager. I can still log in and use it from here. But you can consider the password manager in admin console is more like a catalog for your app. And uh, so a catalog for your company. So uh, you assign these apps to different users based on their needs. OK, so far we talked about what the administrators will see. Let's uh, quickly go back and see what the users will do. Now, before I log in, as I show here uh, on this screen, there are multiple ways you can log in to log in once. One option is using password. The rest of the options are passwordless, and it requires your mobile device. But this, in this example, I am going uh, through the password option. Let's click on login. And as soon as I log in, as you recall, I have to, you know, uh, log in using uh, uh, email. So I click on email. Now it sends a verification directly to my email address. So this is a one-time code that I need to enter here. Okay, as we talk about the, you know, form, assume you want to autofill. This form is already detected. And if anything you see the orange icon, it shows this form is detected. If I click on it, it shows from my profile, uh, you know, the email I have added to this form. So it shows only one. Let's go back here. I can add multiple emails here. I can add multiple addresses here. I can add multiple companies as well. Let's add another email address so you get a sense of what that is. So let's say it is, uh, uh, you know, Tommy at uh, gmail.com and I'm going to save it. So now I have, you know, two emails here. Now let's come back, refresh this form. Now when I click on the field, it shows both of them. And now I can decide which one I want to use. I said this one, it will auto fill it. Now when you come to the next field, this field, uh, you know, let's assume I don't have any data for it. And uh, so I want to put, you know, some info. Let's do this. Let's go to profile. And 
I want to go to add a note. Let's select a category here. We call it miscellaneous. And for the title, I say username. And I say Tommy2015. So that is my username. I save it. So now the idea is I can auto fill, you know, any type of data. So let's go back to username. As you see, the username is not mapped to anything. If if on any field I write mouse button, go to log me once, and then auto fill mapping. It shows me a list of items that I can map. What I added was under secure notes. I click on secure notes. And this was about application secure notes. If you remember, I added under miscellaneous. And now I say this is, you know, mapped. And as you see, it automatically mapped it. And now this field is recognized on this website. On the path, so as you saw, you can, uh, you know, set up autofill for your address, phone, anything that you see under secure notes. You can do autofill for passwords and username as well as uh, for credit card. Now, this really completes our walkthrough of uh, Log Me Once uh, Team Edition. Now, if there are any questions, please leave your comments, and you can always, you know, in this YouTube channel, and you can always go, uh, you know, contact support uh, team at Log Me Once if you have any questions. Thank you very much, and please, you know, sign up to Log Me Monster Team Edition and give it a try. Thank you.